Um, excuse me, you're going to have to move. Are you going to sit down next to me? Hi everybody, my name's Emily, I'm 30 years old, and I have ADHD. And this is you. What I thought I would do today is a bit of a different thing for me, but I thought it would be quite interesting and insightful. And that is to lift the lid, the very dusty cobwebby lid on my Facebook account and go back and have a look at the statuses that I posted. We're going to like over 10 years ago now, we're talking like 2008, 2009, I thought it would be really interesting to see whether or not my ADHD was evident in those statuses. You kind of see if I could pick out the symptoms that were there. <laughs> She's so fuzzy. Is that good? Okay. If you see this lump moving next to me, it's the dog. So one of the diagnostic criteria that doctors use when they're looking to diagnose ADHD is a historic pattern of these symptoms in your life and obviously my parents gave a lot of information about that from my childhood but that kind of period of sort of teenage years through to my 20s when I was undiagnosed but also not necessarily living with my parents I was just kind of doing my own thing and I think it's quite interesting to look at that record and see how my ADHD was manifesting without me even realising it. So let's dive in. Preparing to absolutely roast myself, basically. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to write statuses like Emily, and then you'd start with a verb and be like, loves, like rather than a full sentence? I'm sorry, a lot of them are like this. Emily loves that feeling of finally completing coursework for which a deadline passed a very, very long time ago. So, <laughs> I had a bit of a reputation, especially at high school, of always handing things in late, but somehow getting away with it because teachers liked me. And I would never draft things, I would just churn out like a pretty decent first draft and hand that in. I mean like my English coursework, this is definitely about my English coursework, I got an A. I literally left it way past the deadline to even start it. I think I just got by because I was quite smart, but incredibly disorganised, clearly. 2016, okay, so this is like, uh, not actually as long ago. Emily, you're not a real human being unless you have a what the hell am I doing with my life sit you at least biannually. I mean I'm not going to say that that's not like a common thing but I have existential crises incredibly often and I think potentially a lot of that is to do with ADHD and not necessarily being able to stick at things or to finding them boring or not really feeling fulfilled and obviously that links to my depression as well but yeah I still have that now and I'm pretty sure lots of people do. The irony of being too stressed to go to a well-being talk is not lost on me. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a teacher I think they used to do things like they would try and get you to attend well-being sessions that were meant to make you feel less stressed about being a teacher but it just made you more stressed because it was time taken out of the time that I needed to actually get the job done you know I was struggling anyway so asking me to go to a two-hour well-being talk wasn't going to make my well-being better and I don't think that's an exclusively ADHD thing I think that's just a stressed out teacher workload thing if I have learned anything from being a teacher for the past year and a half, it's how to not pee, drink or eat for nine hours straight. Hashtag a bladder of steel. Hashtag seriously though, I should contact my union. I mean, it, it speaks for itself. I was really struggling and I didn't have the time to go and do things because I was so overwhelmed that 
I just needed all the time possible. And yeah, I should have contacted my union, but I didn't. Okay, so I'm just gonna caveat the next one by saying that I know, I know that this is incredibly pretentious. There is a little part of me that is quite pretentious and I try to moderate her as much as I can. Um, it is kind of ingrained in me and I really try not to let that be a negative thing, but oh my God, I sound like a right idiot in this. <laughs> and it was eight years ago, so would I post this anymore? No. Cringe. <laughs> Please don't judge me. <laughs> 7th of December 2015. I always thought my life was going to be all Jimmy Choo's and New York apartments and Tolstoy on jet planes and yet here I am sat on the floor in a nightclub's promotional t-shirt scraping the last remaining dregs of Nutella from a one kilogram jar and shoveling it directly into my face hole. As funny as this tweet is, in the sense that it is incredibly pretentious and ridiculous and really quite unaware of my privilege, it does highlight, even eight years ago, the immense levels of failure that I felt. That actually, I felt like I was destined for something amazing and I was incredibly aspirational and yet I just felt really depressed and I think this is kind of just showing that. Do I think that my life is going to be Jimmy Choo's and New York apartments and Tolstoy on jet planes? No, <laughs> I don't think I'd want it to be but I do think that there is still a part of me that feels like a failure and I think it's taken me a long time to come to terms with that and understand it and actually start realising that I'm very lucky and that I have a lot of potential and it's not that I'm a failure it's just that I'm doing other things and that's okay. Emily got an offer to do speech therapy. I didn't know what I was doing with my life. I was so overwhelmed, I was so confused, I was lost, I was directionless, blah blah blah, didn't know what I wanted to do. My degree was in linguistics which I loved. I love being a nerd about words. So because I was struggling to find a job, I decided to apply to do a master's in speech therapy and I got accepted. And I legitimately pulled out of that course the night before I was due to start. I haven't really explored that decision in a great deal of detail. However, it is again, really obvious <laughs> and a really clear example of how spontaneous and sometimes unthinking I have been in the past. Do I wish I'd have done it? I don't know something I need to talk about in therapy. <laughs> Sorry, this is a really interesting status because I think this is like probably we can pinpoint when my depression really started and it's probably around the time that this status was posted. 29th of June 2013. A quarter life crisis is definitely a thing right because I just got home after leaving university for the last time and I'm almost certainly having one. I think when I left university, that was the first time that I ever felt proper depression, like clinical depression. And I got diagnosed actually a couple of months after this. I left university, I had no idea what I was doing with my life and things just fell apart because I didn't know who I was. I wasn't being defined by my academic achievement, which I'd used to define myself for so long and I think you have ADHD and it's undiagnosed and you don't know what you're doing and you're not having anyone telling you what to do and it was just it was just really a terrible time so yeah <laughs> there are so many statuses that I posted while I was at university about procrastinating like 
Haiku's written. One. Revision done. Nil. I think it sums up the level of procrastination I have sunk to that I would rather browse an Indian takeaway menu than revise sociolinguistic theory at national borders. I currently know more about curries than convergence at this point. I mean, that is more useful knowledge. I'm not saying that procrastination is a purely ADHD thing, but we know how to do it. Okay, so this, this status is probably highlighting hyperfocus in action. So Emily, somehow I've managed to stay up until 4am making notes on the androcentrism of English pronominals. Why? No, seriously, why? I go to bed early in this after a night out in my favourite nightclub. Okay, first of all, still pretentious. <laughs> I think I have throughout my life worn my nerdiness and kind of academic braininess, smartness as a badge of honour and I'm clearly bragging in this which is embarrassing but um, yeah hyper focusing I actually remember doing this and I remember how fascinating I found it like I really really fell down the rabbit hole of hyper focus on this I remember getting some books out from the library and just losing track of time because I found this subject so interesting and it doesn't happen so much anymore but it's definitely something that can happen um yeah if you ever want me to make a video on the androcentrism of English pronominals then comment below <laughs> Today I got invited to the wedding of the best friend who accompanied me through my formative teenage years. I'm a tad excited to say the least. This makes me sad. I have throughout my life struggled to maintain friendships. Not necessarily because anything bad happened. It's not like I fall out with people and there's big drama. It's just that it's that kind of ADHD thing of if it's not in your direct line of vision you're not necessarily going to prioritize it um and that's what happened with my best friend when I was a teenager I think when she invited me to her wedding it was like a a reminder of how I had neglected that friendship but also b a reminder of how kind and understanding people can be and I think she saw that it wasn't I, I it wasn't that we had fallen out it was just that things had kind of fizzled a bit research extension two words that reduced me to tears in approximately 10 seconds so when i was at university for some reason i took a module which was an optional dissertation i found it so hard <laughs> is 10,000 words and you had to do like research and you had to collect data and you had to analyse the data and all of that. That's fine. I can do it. It's not like I can't do it. It was just that I think I had about six months to do it in and I just couldn't, I couldn't motivate myself to get to the kind of goals that I needed to have. If I'd have been diagnosed as ADHD, then I probably would have got some support with this but I was literally just doing it on my own without much supervision and I just couldn't. And I'd like to say that when I left university, I did actually get a 2-1, so I was quite pleased with that. <laughs> but I think I could have got a first if I'd have actually had a bit more of an idea of what the hell was going on in my brain. Emily, I have a new phone, so if you want to be textual pals, text me your numbers, please. 2014. There must be so many of these. I'm gonna actually like splice this together with me talking about how many times I lose my phone or drop my phone, smash my phone, etc. There's a good one coming up, I know. Dropped her old Nokia down a public toilet. Give up your numbers, please. Emily accidentally just got O2 to bar some poor sod's phone instead of her own. <laughs> Karma will surely come back to bite soon enough. Oops. Um, and a friend's commented and put, but why were you trying to buy your phone? And I've commented, classic, I've lost it. Silly me. <laughs> like, oh, I would, I would forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. Yes, here it is. <laughs> 
this is the classic inadvertently dropping my blackberry into a giant bowl of pancake batter was not top of my list of pancake day shenanigans i'm not ignoring anyone the poor berry is crusting over for a few days before reactivating in like 2013 everyone had blackberries that was like the cool thing to have but can you imagine like all of the crusty pancake batter in between the little keys yeah it was it was dead Another phone that I destroyed, slash lost, slash whatever it was. I think it's the most ADHD accident ever. So when I was a teenager, I had a friend and he had a saying that I've referenced in this one. So it says, Emily, in the immortal words of my friend, just shut up and get on with it. And I'm actually going to insert a picture here of my desk at university because I kind of adopted his mantra <laughs> in my life. Um, just shut up and get on with it. And I think that was like an early response to my ADHD, this idea that I just had to shut up and get on with it rather than messing about, which I clearly evidently did quite a lot. Thank you for your mantra. I still use it to this day. 2010 April. So this would have been when I was choosing what university to go to and the status is Emily just firmed the university that I went to. I remember this happening. I just clicked on the UCAS form firmed for that university for no good reason like i literally just chose that uni because i like the name i also chose that university because i always wanted a boyfriend with a northern accent you know this was this was arctic monkeys time and <laughs> i had a massive crush on alex turner and i think i chose that university because i just quite fancied meeting somebody with that accent <laughs> ridiculous life-changing decisions just made on a whim that adhd vibe <laughs> march 2010 doing my a-levels um where's my time gone you cast panic all in full capitals <laughs> doing my ucas form like writing my personal statement uploading it filling in all of that stuff so stressful for me. I remember being incredibly stressed. So around this time, I think I was leaning really heavily into that kind of like manic pixie dream girl thing. Um, there are a lot of them like in films and television at that time, like in 500 Days of Summer and all of that. And I think it really spoke to the ADHD part of my brain because it was like saying, it's okay to be kind of all over the place and a bit of a, a bit spontaneous and illogical and that's okay and that's sexy and attractive and you should like be those things and actually it's masking like an actual mental illness um so things like this like let's buy a one-way ticket and leave tonight <laughs> who is she you're mentally ill. As if this is a novelty, Emily loves constructive days. Because not every day is a constructive day when you have ADHD. That is it. That's it. I I can't do that anymore. It's just too much. Um, <laughs> clearly, I have had ADHD my whole life. Um, that's just a little sample of what it would have been going on in my life and in my brain. Um, I think it's really interesting to see how I felt and how I kind of used it as part of my personality as well. Kind of used it as like, this is who I am. I'm clumsy and forgetful and unreliable and I procrastinate and hopefully you found that fun. Hope you found it interesting. <laughs> um, it might be good opportunity for you to do some reflection and you could maybe look back and see if you've got any evidence yourself of ADHD in your past. It's kind of like free therapy for yourself. Be warned though, there's some cringy stuff out there. If you're like me and you've been on the internet for, you know, 
15, 15 to 20 years, there's going to be some embarrassing, maybe some confronting stuff that you've said. So just don't be too harsh on yourself. If you want to support my channel because you enjoyed this video, then it would be great if you bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. The link is just here or in the bio. Thank you for watching. Please come back, watch my vlogs and my other videos. Oh, and like and subscribe. That's really helpful too. Bye guys. See you soon. Mwah.